Okay, guys, let's go ahead and we're going to work some examples uh, looking at Vesper theory. Okay, the first thing whenever you're figuring out uh, the shape of a molecule is that you have to write the Lewis structure for it. Okay, so first we're going to write the Lewis structure. Now, we see that we have phosphorus. We have one of them, and phosphorus is in group 15, so that's five valence electrons. Okay, we have hydrogen. We have three of those, and it's in group one, so it has one valence electron. Electron. The entire molecule has a total eight valence electrons to work with. So then we go ahead and we start off. We always put phosphorus in the middle because we can't put the hydrogens. Hydrogens never go in the middle. And we surround it with our hydrogens. Okay. Next step is we go ahead and we bond it. Now they're all bonded, and that took care of two, four, six electrons. So now we are down to two. So since we have two left, hydrogens can't take any more because they only can have a duet. So we give them two phosphorus, and we check and make sure hydrogen has two, hydrogen, all three of them have two, and we check and phosphorus has eight. So this would be our Lewis structure. Now from here we have to find our charge clouds. Now remember that our charge clouds are going to consist of bonding pairs and lone pairs on the central atom. So we look and we see we have one, two, three, four charge clouds. Okay. So our steric number is going to be number four, and we have one lone pair, so we go down here. So our shape is going to be trigonal pyramidal, or trigonal pyramid. Hey guys, now we're working this one out, and we see that we have carbon tetrachloride. So again, we have to write the Lewis structure. Okay, we have carbon, we have one of them, and carbon is in group 14, so it has four valence electrons for a total of four. Chlorine, we have four of those, and it's in group 17, so it has seven valence electrons for a total of 28. So we add all of this up and we get 32. Okay, so 32 is what we're working with. We take carbon and put it in the middle, because remember carbon always goes in the middle, and then we surround it with the chlorines. And then we go ahead and we bond. Okay, we bond everything up and that took care of eight. So now we are down to 24. Okay, and we go ahead and start dishing them out. Can't put them on carbon, so we start putting them on the chlorines. Okay, that was six. That was 12. That was 18. And then we finish up with 24. So we don't have any electrons left. We look and we see that everything has an octet. Everything has eight. So then to look at the shape of it, to look at the Vesper, we look at the central atom. And we see that we have one, two, three, four charged clouds. So our steric number will be four. Do we have any dots around carbon? No, we don't. So it's no lone pairs. So our shape is going to be tetrahedral. Okay, guys, moving on from here, we see that we have H2O, uh, which is water, or we call by its formal name, which is dihydrogen monoxide. Okay, got to draw the Lewis structure, so we start off, we have hydrogen, we have two of them, it's in group one, so it has one valence electron for a total of two. Then we have oxygen, we only have one of those guys, but it has six valence electrons because it's in group 16. We add those up and we get a total of eight. So then we go ahead and we start off, we put oxygen in the middle, because remember hydrogen can never go in the middle. We put the hydrogens around it and we bond them. And that took care of four electrons, so we have four left. Okay, now we can't put any more on the hydrogens, so it has to go to the oxygen. So we put one, two, three, four. Okay, so there's our Vesper shape, because we see hydrogen has the duet, Oxygen has the octet, so we start counting our charged clouds around our central atom of oxygen. We have one, two, three, four. So we have four for our steric number, and then we look at and we see, well, two of those four are going to be dots. So therefore, we have two lone pairs, so our shape is going to be bent or angular. Okay, guys, here's our last example. We have a selenium dioxide. Okay, let's draw the Lewis structure for it. 
We have selenium, which is SE. It, and we have one of those guys, and we see that it's in group 16, so it has six valence electrons for a total of six. We have oxygen. We have two of those guys. It's also in group 16, so it has six valence electrons for 12 for a total of 18. Okay. Now, we're going to put the least electronegative element in the middle, uh, which we know that that is going to be selenium because it's farther away from fluorine. So we put SE in the middle, okay, and then we put oxygens on each side of it, okay, and we bond them together. And we see that that took care of four of our electrons, so now we're down to 14. So we start with our oxygens, and we go ahead and dish those out, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. We got two left, can't put them on the oxygen, so we put them on selenium. Okay, now we look and we see are, is everybody happy? We look at it and we see, no, um, that selenium only has six valence or six electrons around it, so we got to go ahead and create a double bond. Um, what we should see here is that when we pull this in to create a double bond, we could pull in either side, so it's a resident structure. We can do either or. Uh, but for right now, we're just going to pull those in on that side when we're looking at the shape. Uh, we go ahead and we pull those into the double bond so they go away. And this would be our Lewis structure. Okay, so we go ahead and we take these guys and we got to count up our um, charged clouds around the central atom. And we still have one, two, three. So our steric number is going to be three. And we see that of those three charged clouds, one of them is going to be a lone pair. So one lone pair, steric number three, we see that we have, would have a bent or angular shape for selenium dioxide.